Smino. Love for Rent. Uh, it's been a few years since we talked about Smino. 2018 Noir, I guess. Did we talk about uh, the mixtape in 2019? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, there's a surprise mixtape on in 2020. Uh, she already decided, I believe yeah. it was, which is a classic mixtape, not on digital streaming platforms. You got to go get that the old fashioned way, which was a was really cool. And then you listen to it and say, oh, it's a real mixtape with like with samples and uh, freestyles and stuff. So it makes sense. So, yeah, it's still been a few years for Smino, but I think he's been a pretty consistent feature uh, in the past few years as he by no means is like a mainstream artist, but I think he's pretty well known and established as a, you know, singular artist in hip hop right now, you know, and a, a lot of anticipation, I think, for the, the next proper Smino solo album. And I was definitely anticipating Love for Rent. And I think it definitely gives you a lot of those qualities that people have come to expect from Smino. And, uh, definitely a lot of inter- interesting things about it because i think he's become a really in- uh, interesting voice in his own 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 regard but uh i mean how do you feel about about love for ren because i think this one is a bit different from noir in terms of how, the smino of it all like the, his, his performance definitely went in a different direction i think yeah i i thought this was uh a pretty fun listen i mean i think it's it, he's doing a lot right so uh, because he's doing so much that everything is going to uh, have the same batting average. But uh, my my main takeaway, and I had kind of forgotten this from reviewing Smino projects, and I think you don't really get this when you get a Smino feature, uh, is how much you can sound like Mac Miller at times, which it just like really throws me off. Like sometimes his vocal performance just it sounded just like a Mac Miller sample or something like that. Um, but beyond that, I think that. I think he sounds like he was really like inspired to go for a certain type of style or sound and didn't fully like commit and execute. And like, so the album, I think, I think is like almost in this, like, Oh wow. He's really like elevating to some sort of artistic level, but then doesn't quite go. And I'm like, Oh, Mm -hmm. we're a bit of a, blue ball type situation i'd say did, how did you feel though did you have that same experience yeah honestly i think he commits to a direction i just think he almost overdid it like oh. i don't think i would expect to say this but i think it's like too much soul on this one hmm. like smino with black swan with noir with the mixtape had established himself as a unique artist from the midwest you know Familiar to the Chicago hip hop scene, not from Chicago, but close by, of course. But bringing in like Midwest sounds, and then bringing in, of course, the Southern sounds everybody knows, and like there was a neat, unique blend. But on top of being like a, a pretty fun rapper in that that regional uh, orbit, he also had like these real soul sensibilities. And on Love for Rent, I think he like really dives into that soul stuff, you know, like he sings on this album more than he raps. It feels like, and I actually like it sometimes when he like really sings, because I think there's some really cool moments, like the chorus on 90 proof, the single with J Cole, like the high notes he hits on that chorus. It's both catchy, but it's just like straight up, like sung chorus, you know? But for me, it's like, I I just think this almost lacks some of the bite. I kind of wanted from it because like there was just less hip hop on this than there was in the past on his other work. And that's just kind of speaking to my taste and what I wanted to hear. But he does do the soul well. Like it, it is soulful as fuck. Like th- th- there's no doubt about that, you know? And even if this wasn't quite exactly what I was looking for, like it, it's pretty clear that like he has taken from a lot of influences but still kind of brought himself into this music. And that's why he like really stands out, I think, as a unique artist uh, within hip hop these days. But I mean, yeah, how did you feel about like the clear dive into soul and neo soul? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I, I don't know if I necessarily like had that stand out to me. I, I, I definitely noticed that it was a lot more singing from him. I think I think because of the lack of like choirs consistently i wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. feeling the soulfulness as much but i i definitely can see what what you're saying and as i'm like thinking back to some songs like oh yeah there's definitely like influence there from soul i think like 
maybe for me too the the songs that i found myself gravitating towards most like a song like bro Fre- bro freak with uh dochi and batman scoop like that song almost feels like it was like a he was trying to make a good kid mad city record you know and a few times on this we get like moments of me even as the song called oh old ass kendrick so like <laughs> i feel like there's a lot of moments where he's trying to like pull in these like I th- it's definitely a soulful, more like jazzy influences to like bring about, uh, I think, a bit more emotion. And, and I think also like some variety and some danciness to the album. Um, and I think for me, I, f- I was kind of leaning more into that that perspective. So I'm, I'm trying to process as we talk. I mean, <laughs> as I'm also like looking through here and thinking about his like uh, features, like the ones that I think everybody's going to be talking about, J. Cole. For sure. I mean, that's the that track already has like 60 million plays on Spotify. So uh, le- legit single there. But, um, you know, I don't know if any of them really stood out to me other than like obviously a little Uzi and mm-hmm. little Uzi. And I mean, Uzi is just so much himself. It's like, I don't know, that, yeah. that didn't feel so full to me either. But I, I get what you're saying now, now that you said it. <laughs> just I'm trying to like make sense of it now. I can't believe I missed it, really. Yeah, no, that's all good. Uh the Uzi feature is definitely fun, and uh, to me, kind of like highlights. It's like, oh wow, listen to Uzi like really fitting into this vibe of love for rent, but still being Uzi, still rapping, and and he's not, he's been on a great feature run lately. But like Smino, like you know, I think No L's stood out to me in terms of like the flow from Smino there. Like that's one where I was like, yeah, it's still pretty hip hop. That's still familiar to some of his older work. But yeah, I mean, I think to me, I would probably have to gravitate towards stuff like blue billy where you hear like this blatant harmonization from smino with his vocals and like often harmonizing with himself and like layering in in stuff like that um and moving forward i'm actually quite curious to hear like what is next for him because it seems like he's clearly going down this this path you know where there there is less less blatant rapping uh coming from him and I do, I do think he does this well enough that there is definitely room to keep going down this road. But like I said, it just kind of perhaps just threw me for a loop a little bit to hear like such of like a strong departure from what I was more accustomed to expecting from him. And like most of his features too are still pretty hip hop leaning, you know. But yeah, he seemed he he did make it work for the most part. I think on this. Yeah, I mean, even a song like Defibrillator, right, which I think speaks to that soulfulness that you're talking about, when he raps, he can still fucking bring it. And so it's like, uh, you know, I, if if this is him really leaning into this as like a career arc or more so just for the album, I'm not sure. But he seems to be he seems to be wanting to push himself as an artist, which is really mm. cool. And he's still mm-hmm. like, what, in his 20s? So he's got a lot of a lot of room to grow still so i'm excited to see what's next for him do you have like one track that really just like grabbed you you mentioned blue billy yes mino's actually 31 look at that uh you know i I think 90 proof just really stands out like i love this mino performance and then you also have a really strong jacob feature verse tacked in there as well like it it works really well um like i said blue billy is good noel's pudgy with uzi um yeah, I think, I think there's plenty to like. Yeah, definitely lots of like. Uh, so we'll be adding a track or two to our Now Such the Best 2020 playlist. Go follow there. Stay up to date with all the music that we like.